2-0 in Uruguay, and it was well deserved from Uruguay. Just the second defeat in 52 games for Argentina and their first loss since the World Cup opener against Saudi Arabia. How did Uruguay pull it off? The game plan by Marcelo Bielsa was outstanding. Outstanding. So uh, people focus on Lionel Messi, rightfully so, when you consider Argentina. He didn't pay so much attention to Lionel Messi. He paid attention to the midfield of Argentina. And how do we go about pressing that midfield so that we cut out the service to Lionel Messi. And so the work of Ugarte, of Fede Valverde, or Nico de la Cruz, how much pressure they were able to put on guys like Enzo Fernandez and Alexis McAllister and Rodrigo de Paul, to the point to where whenever Argentina was trying to play at the back, they were pressing and getting numbers around the ball, forcing turnovers in bad areas. And now that first pass, it wasn't going sideways, it wasn't going back, it was going forward. And why forward? Because if you catch Argentina coming out, and now it's uh, essentially a race between Otamendi and Darwin Nunez, that's never going to work. We saw the goal by Darwin Nunez, but let me just tell you, Darwin Nunez had a chance five minutes in, in a very similar situation. The ball was misplayed coming out of the back from Argentina. They turned the ball over, first ball, first ball forward from Uruguay, and now they're going on the counter, and now they're creating opportunities. The best opportunities in this game came from Uruguay. They were outstanding in the pressures to the midfield. They denied the service to Lionel Messi, and Lionel Messi, while he got on the ball, he didn't get on the ball in dangerous areas. And Lautaro Martinez was sort of running into the space of Julian Alvarez, and it all became a big mess. But it all started for the lack of, and the lack of control that Argentina had and the, and, and the control that Uruguay were able to put over this game in and around Argentina because of their pressure and the work that they got around the ball. How surprised were you by this result? A lot. Really? Uh, listen, I, I think Argentina, I'm sure themselves, to be stand-up, stand-up team in, the, in, in world football at home. I'm, I'm expecting a whole lot more from Argentina. Uruguay, yes, and, and give, given the, the temperature of this game, will always stand as fighting chance, but I, I did not expect them to, to nullify Argentina's threat in, in, the way that, in the way that they did. They have issues at the back uh, more times than not. I mean, Martinez can, can get them out of, of, of really tricky situations, but I, if that's all you're relying on, eventually, that, that comes, comes to bite. And we, we think of, of Marcelo Bielsa as this guy, El Loco Bielsa. He, he, everybody's just going to round like crazy. That, that wasn't happening with Uruguay. Yes, the, whenever they got to run the ball, a lot of pressure on the ball and a lot of effort and a lot of work and a lot of intensity. But he was very smart, very intelligent. It wasn't just running around for the sake of running. He was running in the right moments to force Argentina into uncomfortable areas. And once they turned the ball over now, you had Fede Valverde running with the ball. You had Darwin Nunez running with the ball. And that's when you can exploit your physical ability. Darwin Nunez superior to Nico Tamendi. When Fede Valverde is running with the ball, he's better than just about everybody in the world because of that physicality and that long strike. We saw that from Uruguay once they won the ball. But in order to force Argentina into those areas, that's where I thought Marcelo Vielsa and Uruguay got it all sorts of right. They were able to force Argentina in uncomfortable positions, force the turnover, and now we go. Mm. Uh, Gustavo, you're a writer. What's the bigger headline here? Argentina losing at home or Uruguay in this turnaround? They've now beaten in their last two games Argentina and your Brazil. Now, Argentina losing at home because they were an invincibility run. They were they are the world champions. They have Lionel Messi playing in the, in the high level. So for me, the, the headline is Argentina losing at home. But we have to talk about Uruguay. The thing that I most like in this team, in this Uruguayan team, is how they renew their team. When we talk about the best Uruguayan players, we are talking about Valverde, uh, we're talking about Ugarte, Ronald Araujo, Darwin Nunes. They are young players. Uh, we're, we're, we do not, because we get used in the last years. When we, we, we used to watch the Uruguay match, we used to watch Luis Suarez and the old guys. Now, no. Now we're talking about the young players. So Uruguay, Uruguay has a team for many, many years from now on. Uh, Facundo Pelistre, who's playing very well. And he's getting his position. So uh, with Marcelo Bielsa, uh, the way that they played yesterday, uh, a perfect match. Each player knew exactly what they had to do uh, with the ball, uh, without the ball in the defensive phase when they had to press high, when the defensive line, when defensive line was low. It was a perfect match for Uruguay. Incredible win. But of course, that me as Shaka also, uh, I was surprised with this Argentina loss. Here's, uh, here's what Messi had to say. I'll read you his comments. Uh, well, these young people have to learn. They, Uruguay, have a good group of players, a good national team, but they have to learn respect, 
for their elders because this Clásico was always intense, hard, but always with a lot of respect, so they have to learn a little. Mm. Taco, what do you think of the comments there from fiery Lionel Messi? Well, I, I, understandable from Lionel Messi, and if not, if not expected, but at the same time, if you're Uruguay and you're coming up against the world champions mm. and the eight-time Ballon d'Or winner, uh, and you know the temperature is going to be raised, um, these things happen on the pitch mm -hmm. quite often. And while, again, yes, I understand Lionel Messi's, Lionel Messi's response and, and it's, it's expected, the only way you, you truly kind of teach this respect that, that, that he's <laughs> alluding to is on the pitch. Mm. Um, saying it in, in, in a post-game press conference means, means absolutely nothing. It's only when those lessons are learned in wins and losses does anybody take any notice. Come on, Leo. Uh, come on, Leo. <laughs> Respect on the field? What? Who has ever gotten respect on the field? Like, to, to, to say that this is, has been a heated rivalry in the past, but it has been sort of marked by respect, what are we calling respect? Because... Uh, Violence. Yeah, <laughs> violence and <laughs> reminding each other of each other's mom. Is that, is that, is that respectful? No, no. And that, that happens regularly. It doesn't have to be Uruguay against Argentina for this to happen regularly. It, if you get on the field at this level, with this sort of intensity, with this much on the table, things are going to get out of control. Now, I will say, having said all of this, if you're Ugarte and you make the gesture that you made, you're asking for trouble. Mm. Quite frankly, there are more subtle. Hey, Ugarte, there are more subtle ways to disrespect your opponent than doing what you did, because it was very clear for the world to see as to what he was, he, his thoughts about Rodrigo de Paul, <laughs> and they were not positive. I'll just say that. Do you want to describe that? No, no, Sebi does. Sebi, no, no. Sebi's got a good I, eye. I, no, well, I do like to keep my job, and <laughs> all, I understand that Sevi has a young kid. I have kids going to college.